Hello, in this video today we're going to have a quick look at the basic Reaper setup. I know that I had done a previous video some month ago, uh, but I've discovered many things uh, since. So uh, let's launch Reaper and I'll start with a very basic new project without default template so we can really go through everything or almost everything and what I'm doing uh, let's uh, not save it for today and uh, what way the first thing to do is of course to check that the audio device in preferences is set on Dolby Audio Bridge that we have on project basically our basic that's a new project without default template so let's check that in the project settings the sample rate is to 48 kilohertz that's fine um, and the one thing that I'm doing most of the time is um, setting up the routing for the master track is by default a two channel master track but uh, what I'm doing now is that I'm using the master to feed the main Dolby Atmos bed which is a uh, 10 channel as it's 7.1.2 uh, so that's why I'm setting up the master uh, to a 10 channel bed um, and then you have to send the multi-channel source all 10 channels uh, to the output output 1 to 10 and this feeds the 10 channels of the Dolby Atmos render that we do have here on uh, the top so that's the good thing uh, to do then we have to uh, set up the the other very important thing is the time code uh, I'm not coming back to it I've done it already in the previous video and this is still correct so uh, since I've made a track template for Atmos called LTC and so I do have uh, a time code generator item and in source property it's uh, still set to sending audio the frame rate must match uh, that of the uh, Dolby Atmos production suite and or if you're working to picture of the film and that's where you want to set also your start time uh, if it has to be um, on a specific value and well that's about it and so we can check that if we play uh, this time code and still mentioning uh, to think about defeating the solo so when you solo an audio track when you will be mixing uh, well it will still be uh, playing and on the Dolby Atmos render uh, we can see that it is indeed receiving properly the time code and to this I have something to add uh, in the Dolby Atmos render uh, uh, and we will go through many uh, details in that because I've discovered that there are some fine tunings that needs to be done and um, as you can see the audio input here is set on Dolby audio bridge uh, but the audio output that would normally be sent straight to my interface actually I'm sending it to a special device that have created and I will show you just that now uh, I've called it Atmos output and this is following Dolby recommendations and we have to switch to the audio and MIDI settings uh, and I've created this, this um, a new aggregate device um, that I called Atmos Output but you can really call it the way you want and what you have to do is when you create it I can well just let me do it again so um, and what you have to do is select first what is your actual output interface in my case that this is the merging 
Ravenna AES 67 um, card and interface and then and only then do you uh, select the Dolby audio bridge and once this is done you have to set the clock source to the Dolby audio bridge and that's it so uh, I will just um, let me just destroy this one I've noticed much more stability because I must confess that before on the first tests that I've done uh, I was only using what seemed right um, and actually I did have some glitches and clock issues uh, not very annoying but you know the, the, the kind of glitch when you cannot figure out if it's a buffer size problem you know like it too short something like that and since I've done this uh, this aggregate device this, so which I called Atmos output and using the Dolby Audio Bridge as the master clock and setting up the interface and the Dolby Audio Bridge and using it as the audio output device uh, ever since I've done this I never ha had any uh, troubles. So that's it for a very basic setting. The last thing that I'm doing in Reaper uh, usually is uh, to um, not display the timecode track and uh, so you can do that in the track manager and uh, not displaying neither in the track control panel or the mixer cons control panel. The mixer control panel which I never use Reaper is so good for that that uh, I don't feel the need to uh, use the mixer at all actually um, and that's it that's really all it takes to get Reaper ready to mix in Dolby Atmos in the next video I will cover a few things in the Dolby Atmos uh, software itself and I'm insisting on the fact that it's a software because as it's uh, sold through Avid uh, and I think it's not very kind from Avid that on the page, uh, the product page, they're saying that it's an AAX plugin, uh, which is not true because it's a standalone app. But by saying that the format is AAX, that leads people to believe uh, that it's a Pro Tools thing only, which is not true. It's just, it's basically a Macintosh, Mac OS standalone application. Uh, and well, anyway, uh, so in the next video, I'll cover some stuff about setting up and setting, fine tuning the preferences in the Dolby Atmos renderer. And in the meantime, I will um, possibly do a live streaming of a mix. I'm just before that I want to check a few things about the copyright police <laughs> not to be stricken down <laughs> already um, and um, so keep posted uh, subscribe if uh, you may find that interesting and uh, well thanks for watching and see you soon